Patrick Henry. I'm here at Boat Things LLC in Columbus, Ohio. And the point of this video today is to talk about the Fish Obsessed Dominator Mount. It's an aftermarket bracket for your live scope transducer. It works with Garmin LVS32, LVS34, and Active Target 1 and 2 from Lowrance. The point of this mount is pretty simple. It replaces the perspective bracket that comes with those uh, live scope systems. This allows you to have a zero degree offset with your trolling motor. So your standard bracket comes at an eight degree angle. It allows the transducer to see past the trolling motor head. But with this bracket, it actually offsets it far enough away from the trolling motor barrel that it doesn't need to have that tilt. What this allows you to do is have a live scope transducer that is perfectly parallel with your trolling motor shaft. It gives you a true straightforward image on your live scope screen. And the coolest thing about it, in my opinion, is how it does perspective mode. Now that you're here in your forward mode, it's real simple. You just turn it, click it once, and it's got these adjustable teeth. Now for this first click down, that's going to be where your shallow water images get the best results. This is where probably your stock bracket is going to show you a good picture too about this angle right here. What you can do is adjust it down even further to work in deep water. Once you get above 12-15 feet, your live scope in perspective mode really doesn't give you that great of an image. This allows you to get a much better picture and show you things right around the boat as you get in that deeper water. Now that we've talked about what this bracket does, we're going to go over installation. And out of the bag, it's really not that hard, but there's still a very proper way to do it to get it set up right. And if you need one, and you're watching this video, hit up BoatThingsLLC.com. That's our new website. We try to keep them in stock. These things have been really, really hard to find over the past few months. So if we have them in stock, make sure you order one while you can. If not, we take pre-orders and, you know, waiting lists for the next round. So make sure you get on there and check it out or stop in. We have an option for in-store pickup as well. Now, that being said, this is what you're going to find out of the package when it comes. You'll have your actual dominator mount, a sticker, some hardware depending on which transducer system you use, your installation guide, and that's about it. The tools you will need are a 5 16 Allen key, which comes with normally your live scope or active target, a half inch deep well socket, and preferably a torque wrench if you have one that does inch pounds. If not, you can crank down the bolts on this pretty good with that standard Allen key, but to get the optimal results, there's actually torque specs on these different bolts here. So now that we're on a trolling motor where we're going to switch the stock mount for Fish Obsessed Dominator, you can see here the actual angle on the transducer compared to the trolling motor shaft. And also, when you put it in perspective mode, it is locked in at this angle right here, this 90 degree bracket angle. So it really works best in shallow water, so that's what I'm talking about when I say that. So the first thing you're going to want to do is take your transducer off the bracket. We'll go through that here. If you have an LVS32 or a Lowrance Active Target, it's very simple because you're going to reuse some of this hardware. The LVS34 transducer is the only one that's a little bit different. And here I have a standard Altrex. This dominator is specific to the transducer because it fits the tooth pattern that is on the side of this transducer head right here. So the LVS34 is different than the 32 and the active targets. Both active targets are the same, so you can use that one for either of them. The other thing you want to consider when you're purchasing one of these mounts is the trolling motor that it's on. If you have a regular Altrex, a Garmin Force, a Lowrance Ghost, uh, an Encoder Fortrex, a Motor Guide Tour, you're going to stay, uh, go with the standard Dominator 1375 series. That is designed for this trolling motor shaft. If you have a Quest of any variety, there is a Quest specific mount that has the squared shaft shape. And if you have a live scope that you upgraded to a Quest off of a different trolling motor, this is a good option because the standard bracket like you see here is like this. It's round and it doesn't really fit on that squared off shaft. So going with a Quest bracket is going to be a good solution and another reason to upgrade to this dominator. From here, we're going to take off the Allen head bolt setter holding this mount on. And you can reuse some of this hardware if you want to, but these fish obsessed mounts come with all the hardware you need to make it work. So we're going to get one, two, three, four. And you notice on this boat here, the live scope transducer is pretty low to the bottom of the trolling motor shaft. 
A lot of folks have them a little higher on the trolling motor shaft. Um, part of the reason is to make sure it sees past the trolling motor head. With this dominator mount, it offsets it enough that it sees past, hence why you can get to zero degrees. But that also lets you bring it down all the way to the bottom of the shaft here to give you more clearance if you have a Mega360. That way you actually have more room on your shaft to raise and lower it when you get in shallow or deep water. Now that we have those off. So now we're going to get into the installation of the dominator mount. First thing you want to do is get your bushing material around the trolling motor shaft. And I'm going to put this uh, piece on. This is your axle assembly as they call it. You're going to want to put it on here and grab your Allen wrench and start to tighten these down. You can get them snug, but we'll come back and get them tight here in a minute. Because you want to make sure it's lined up right. So one. Two. For number three. Grab my last bolt. Put number four. Now that they're on the shaft and snug, this is where you align your mount with your trolling motor barrel here. That way when your head is pointing straight, you know this is pointing straight, you know it's at a true vertical viewing angle. So you can come from underneath and as long as you can see the flat surfaces on this and get them parallel with the side of this trolling motor, you're going to have it where you want. So now we're going to take our torque wrench and this information is outlined in the instruction manual. Uh, it's not the easiest instruction manual to read, hence the purpose of me making this video, but you'll see right here item number three, cap screws are torqued to a maximum of 2.5 foot pounds or 30 inch pounds. So we're going to get our torque wrench ready put it to 30 inch pounds and tighten these down. 30. And I'm going to make sure I get these pretty snug all around before I get to that 30 inch pound because you don't want it to kick out that way as you go around and tighten the screws. Once we get close, the wall come right along. There's number one. There's number two. There's number three. And there's number four. So now that this is on, you're going to attach your transducer to the dominator mount. And if you have an LVS32 or an active target one or two, it's going to be pretty simple. You're just going to take this piece, this piece, put them on here, tighten them down, and use the hardware that comes either with your transducer or in the bag and bolt it on to this tooth piece. With the LVS34, it's a little bit different and a little bit more complicated. This is probably the trickiest part of this installation. You're going to find a bag of hardware. It has a long bolt, two flat washers, one that's uh, smaller and one that's larger, a half inch uh, nut and four cupped Belleville washers. So the first thing you're going to want to do with these pieces is get your small flat washer and put it on your bolt. This threads through your transducer and make sure you have it on the right side so if you're on the starboard side it's like this and if you're on your port side it's like that. So you're going to take that bracket, put it on, you're going to start with your large flat washer put down on the bolt. They're going to line up your Belleville washers in that alternating pattern. One, two, three, four, and then you put your half inch nut on. There's a picture of this in the installation instructions included with the mount, but this is the proper way to put these Belleville washers. You have two of them facing each other, the other two facing each other, and that way it gives you a spring effect when you tighten it down. Put that tight. Grab my hex key. 
It's going to be that same 5 16 hex key as we used for all these other cap screws. And you're going to tighten this till it gets pretty much all the way tight. Now that it's tight, if I try to spin this bracket here, it's not going to work. The reason we have those Belleville washers is to give a spring effect inside of here. Now that I have it tight, you are going to back it off. And I believe the installation instructions say one full turn. I like to start by doing a half a turn first. So I'm here. Put it on off. Grab that one. That's where I go. Half a revolution right there. And you can play with this. This is an actual setting you can adjust to your liking on how stiff or loose you want this to turn. I like it pretty stiff, so when I'm running down the lake, it's not going to tilt on me. If I have it in forward, I get to my next fishing spot. I want it in forward still. So this is about where I like it. You can back it off a little bit more, and it'll be easier to turn, but I like it pretty stiff. So the next thing we're going to do is put this on our axle here. And this is very simple, just similar to putting it on the trolling motor shaft. You put that, both brackets on. The other part that we want to make sure we do at this stage is to line up this with this. If you can see here, this surface right here is parallel with these lines and this surface, and that transducer right there is perfectly parallel with that trolley motor shaft. That gives us that zero degree angle everybody's after. You want to make sure you get these snug, turn it to here, and tighten these down. That way every time you go into perspective, or back into forward, it has these notches on the back side of the dominator axle right there. And that's what makes sure you are perfectly in line every time. Now that you have this mount on your shaft here, and you can actually see it's not right up to the edge, you can put it anywhere forward or back. There's not a whole lot of room, but it doesn't really matter exactly where you have it on here. So that's not a big deal. So we're going to take our torque wrench again and torque these to spec, which is 30 inch pounds again. And you want to make sure you do it in an alternating pattern again so you don't have uh, it kick out of alignment on you. Good. This one's a little loose, but we'll get there. Perfect. Perfect. And just about there. So for this specific example, we're going to come back and add a little bit more wire down here to let this transducer have its full functionality. So make sure if you do switch to this transducer, you have enough cable or pull some more cable out of your boat and retape it down the shaft to give yourself plenty of play. The way we always like to do it is put a service loop, they call it. So this one doesn't really have it. I would put a few extra inches of cable down here in a little bit of a loop. That way it's never going to bind or pinch this. And this is kind of what I was talking about where you can turn it and make it modular and have it any sort of alignment. You can raise it up, lower it, but that is your fish obsessed mount. They also make this in just a zero degree trolling motor mount where it is these two pieces and a couple of spacer links that pretty much go right on this. It avoids this whole assembly here, so if you don't use perspective mode, that's another really good option. However, if you have it and you're going to do this, I would just get the dominator. That way you have the option. If you need one, make sure you hit up both things. We probably have some in stock, and if we don't, we're taking pre-orders. These things have been extremely hard to find over the past few months, and we've been blessed to be able to uh, get them faster than a lot of other places. So either give us a call, give us a shout on the internet at BoatThingsLLC.com, uh, look our Facebook and Instagram up, and if you purchase one from us, and that's the point of why you're watching this video, thank you. Hopefully this helps. Um, once you get the hang of it, it's really not that bad to do, but when it comes out of the package and you look at the instructions, it's not as self-explanatory as you would think. So thank you guys for watching. We're hopefully going to be doing some more of these installation tips and stuff in the future. And uh, good luck on the water.